program starring Jack Benny with Don Bester and his orchestra. And the orchestra opens the program with It's Fun to be Fooled from Life Begins at 8.40. And now we bring you the only rival of Popeye the Sailor, Jack Benny. Hello, everybody. This is Jack Benny with a good, slappy show full of pep. And we're all on our heels, ready to go. Hey, Jack, what's the matter with you tonight? You look all worn out. What do you mean, Don? Well, you look tired. Your eyes are baggy. It's all right. I'll have them pressed in the morning. You, know? <laughs> you see, Don, <laughs> I've been I've been rehearsing day and night for the past two weeks with a show called Bring On the Girls, and we open in Washington tomorrow. You know? Oh, you're going with a show, eh? Yeah, the drama finally got me. <laughs> Uh, but tell me, Jack, do you have a big part? Don't be silly. I'm playing the most important part in the show. Oh, then you're the leading man, I see. No, no, not exactly. But in the uh, first act, there's a scene where I open the door for the leading man to make his entrance. You see? Well, that's not... It's not, eh? If I'm not there, he doesn't get in. Where's your show? <laughs> Why, certainly, certainly, of course. And, and say, what about that picture of yours that opens next week, uh, Transatlantic Merry-Go-Round? Well, what about it? Well, do you open doors in the picture, too? No, no, I really have the star part from that. You see, it's a mystery, Don. You see, and right at the very opening of the picture, I'm found dead in a stateroom. See? Well, what makes that part so important? Well, I'm the fellow they talk about for the rest of the picture. <laughs> well, I'm surely going over and see it next week, Jack. Get in early, Don. You know I die in the first scene. <laughs> Oh, Jack. Hello, Don. It's a nice entrance, Mary, yawning. What makes you so tired? I don't know. I slept all afternoon, and I'm just all in. Well, how'd you get tired sleeping all day? I dreamt I was a six-day bicycle rider, and six days on a bicycle is too much, believe me. <laughs> Mary, look at Mary. Why don't you dream you're a turtle and take it easy? I did, and a rabbit chased me all over town. Oh, <laughs> oh hello, everybody. Good yawning, folks. Good yawning? <laughs> Oh, you too? Keep Gee, Parker, Parker what makes you so tired? tired? Hey, Mary, that's my line. Wait a minute. Well, who wouldn't be tired? Say, you know what I just saw? What? I just saw a horse pull a wagon up a steep hill. Well, why should that make you tired? Well, you try pulling a wagon up a steep hill. <laughs> Wait a minute, Fry. Did you pull the wagon or did the horse do it? What's the difference as long as they're both healthy? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, look, there's Don Bester over there. Say, Don, how is it you're not all in? Well, I stay up nights and take care of myself. Oh. You're different, I see. Don, you better get some sleep tonight and stop impersonating George Arliss, you know? Come on, everybody, get on your toes. Let's get this program started. Mary, have you any jokes for tonight? No, Jack, but I wrote a poem all about fall. Mary, will you stop with those silly poems already? But, Jack, I haven't written one since Labor Day. Oh, Labor Day. All right, listen. Go ahead, go ahead read your poem. Uh, the title is uh, Fall is Here. Fall is Here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, fall is Here. Oh, Fall is Here. Trees are bare most everywhere. Because Fall is Here. Oh, boy. Daylight saving time has ended, and it's dark at 5 o'clock. Acorns falling from the elm trees. Overcoats come out of hawks. Hey, that gives me a thought, Mary. Go ahead. <laughs> Leaves are rooty in the valley. Dizzy deans have gone to root. Birds are flying to the Southland for a drink of orange juice. Orange juice, that rhymes. Yeah, go ahead. Fall is here. Oh, fall is here. Then comes winter and the spring. Then comes June, jello, and August. Then the fall. June, jello, and August. <laughs> That couldn't be July, could it? Yes, but it's a flavor strawberry, raspberry, cherry, lemon, orange, and lime. Then you know that fall is here and with us all the time. Mary. Mary, did you really write that poem? No, I stole it from Henry W. Longjello. Play, Don. June, Jello, and August. What kind of... Rock and roll, rock and roll from the motion picture Transatlantic Merry-Go-Round, played by Don Bester and the boys. And now tonight, folks, we are continuing our policy of giving you a guest star on each program. Last week, we gave you those priceless entertainers, the three chicken sisters. 
How do you mean priceless, Jack? I don't want them again at any price. <laughs> but this program did them no harm as they were immediately engaged at the Waldorf Biltmore for the floor show, where they are doing a number with pail and mop and cleaning up. <laughs> and now, I put that in myself. Like, and now tonight, folks, after a fist fight with hundreds of other programs, we have secured for you a great violin virtuoso who comes direct from Boston via Lynn. Get it? Huh? <laughs> via Lynn. Lynn is near Boston. See? Get that joke, Mary? Who wants it? Oh, all right. <laughs> I now take great pleasure in introducing to you that marvel of the violin, the great Senor Fett. Uh, say something, Mr. Fett. I am glad for it to be here tonight because it's raining outside. <laughs> and we're glad to have you with us. Now tell me, Mr. Fett, uh, what is your first name? Oh, just call me Hi. Call you what? Hi. Oh, Hi Fett, I see. I thought that name sounded <laughs> familiar. Are there any other musicians in your family? Oh, yes. I have a little brother who plays very good fiddle, too. Is that so? What's his name? Low. Oh, Low Fett and Hi Fett, I think. <laughs> Uh, where are you boys from? Philadelphia. Well, no wonder. <laughs> Comes natural, huh? Say, that's a pretty good violin you've got there. Is that a uh, Stradivarius? No, Sears Robocius. Oh, I think. Five dollars down here? And the dollar of each year. Ah. Well, Fetsy, how about giving us a little tune? A hmm? pleasure. Hmm. Starts off well. <laughs> Uh, well, you're a little tired, too. <laughs> Say, I notice you play with only four fingers, Mr. Fetz. Uh, don't you use your thumb? Uh, my thumb is sore from hitchhiking. I see. You were... <laughs> I can readily believe that. You were making a concert tour. Yes. Uh, did you make this trip alone? No, with a tin cup. Oh. <laughs> you're a bum. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who called this artist a bum? Who called this bum an artist? Mary. <laughs> now tell me, Mr. Fetz, uh, were you always a violin player? No, I started with the cello. Well, that's about the same as the violin, isn't yes, it? Yes, uh, I played the cello for five years, and that gave me the technique for the violin. I see, and you owe it all to cello. Huh? Yes. Yeah. And hundreds of other artists have said the same thing about jello with its new, fresh, rich fruit flavor. Wilson, he said cello, not jello. Oh, pardon me, Jack. I'm a little over anxious. What does he want? <laughs> Don't worry about Wilson. You see, if it wasn't for him, you and I wouldn't be here tonight. I see. <laughs> Uh, go ahead, Mr. Fetz, uh, play something. Yeah. Uh, what would you like, after all, I'm here to please you? Well, do you know, uh, let's see, do you know Chopin, St. Louis Mama? I am an artist, not a stool pigeon. <laughs> well, play anything at all, I don't care. Uh, let's see, now, are you familiar with Mendelssohn's Wedding March? Am I? Four times. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Mm, yeah. That was my line, oh, that I see. You have the next one. That's it. it. Well. <laughs> it's all right, Mr. Fett, you know. But, Mr. Benny, I forgot to tell you, I am also a trick violinist. What trick violinist? Why didn't you say so? Sure. Here's a list of my tricks. I have them all written out. I see. You do all these tricks in the order in which they're written? Yes, sir. Let me see. Uh, number one. All right. His first trick, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be playing a violin and musical saw at the same time. That ought to be good. A violin and a saw. All right, go ahead, Fetsy. <laughs> Mary, Mary, save the saw. That we can use it in the grocery store. Now, his next trick, ladies and gentlemen, would be playing a violin and saxophone simultaneously and riding home for money at the same time. <laughs> Ready? Go. <laughs> He's, still... He's still riding home for money. And now, Mr. Fett... Mr. Fett, I'd like to suggest a trick. Do you mind? Not at all. I'd like to hear you play the violin, cornet, jews harp, and bass drum while marching out of the studio in perfect rhythm. Is that clear? Okay. All right. Have you got all your instruments? Yes, sir. All right. Go. <laughs> Right, right.
right out of the studio. That's it. By Mary, Mary, quick, slam the door. And now, Frank Parker. Frank Parker, our weekly guest star, will sing One Night of Love. Uh, do you want any tricks, Jack? No, Frank, put down that saw. You'll cut yourself. <laughs> Parker got more applause than I did. <laughs> that was uh, Frank Parker singing One Night of Love from the motion picture of the same name. And now, ladies and gentlemen, owing to a very good business, very good business last week, the J. Benny Grocery Store will continue for another week with a fresh supply of new groceries, new customers, but the same eggs. Wilson, tell the folks what happens next while I bring in the sack of potatoes. <laughs> The place is Old New Hampshire. The time is 7 a.m. The proprietor is just arriving and finds Mary, his chief clerk, getting ready for the day's work. <clears throat> Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Squire Benny. What are you marking on those signs? Well, I'm making up a special sale on soap today. Three for quarters. How much were they before? Five cents cake. Well, <laughs> you've certainly got a head on you. So has a glass of beer. <laughs> 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 That's damn, a uh, darn good. <laughs> ah, good morning, Mrs. Borsmeyer. I see you're here bright and early. Why shouldn't I be? I bought some eggs here last week and my son left home. Well, why, uh, why didn't you bring the eggs back? Not until my husband leaves, too. What is the matter with those eggs? The yolks were old. Old yolks? Well, don't forget, this is a radio program. <laughs> is there, uh... <laughs> didn't think that was going to go that good. Is there anything else, uh, you... Anything else you wanted today? Yes. I'll take this piece of French pastry. That's my hat. Put it down. <laughs> I guess the cherries fooled you. <clears throat> Is there something else you'd like? No, that'll be all, thank you. Good morning, Jay. Morning, Zeb. Well, Zeb Parker, how be ya? I be all right, how be you be? <laughs> Fine couple of hitting. Rubes. <laughs> Fine couple of rubes. Yeah, now, you'll have to repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what can I do for you, Zeb? Well, I want some pumpernickel. Pumpernickel, eh? Well, we're all out of pumps. Well, then give me the nickel. I want a telephone. Oh, pumpy me for a nickel, eh? <clears throat> Dad, they tell me you've been down the city. Been a-cutting up, eh? Yes, sirree. I saw a burlicue show the other night. You did? A burlicue show, huh? Yeah. How was it? Yippee! <laughs> oh, that's good, eh? Well, Zeb, I see you got your basket with you. What's it going to be today? Well, give me some strong horseradish. We're going to have a wild time tonight. Here you are, Zeb. Don't know what's going to become of you. First thing you know, you'll be using pepper on your victuals. Well, you only live once, you know. <laughs> Anything else you want, Zeb? Let me see. My wife is washing today, and she wants me to get some soap. Here you are. How about some starch? What? Starch, starch. I don't get that. Starch, what's in your shirt? My brother, he borrowed it yesterday. Get out of here. Get out of here. Goodbye, Jay. Goodbye, Brother Crawford. <laughs> Get up, my line. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Small. Good morning, Mary. What would you like today? I want to buy a duck. That's on another program. <laughs> oh, of course. Well, just give me some caviar. Gee, we have no caviar. Why don't you make it yourself, you dope? How do you make it? A pound of barley and some stove polish. All right. Anything else? Let me see. I want something, but I forget what it is. It starts with Q. Cucumbers? That's this. Here you are. Wait a minute. There are warts on those cucumbers. Oh, that's all right. They're not contagious. Yeah. Hey, how do you do, Mrs. Schmaltz? How were those dog biscuits I sold you last week? They gave me indigestion. Good thing you didn't give it to the dog. <laughs> hey, here comes Zeke Bester. Hello, Zeke. Hello, Jay. Listen closely, folks. It's Don Bester doing a rube again. <laughs> How you feeling, Zeke? I'm Zeke and tired. Is he wasting his time? I'll bet Chick Sales is worried. <laughs> well, Zeke, how's crop? Yeah, I made a 7-Eleven last night. That's crap. Dial, well... <laughs> 
There's money in crops. <laughs> Who's that, Mary? Oh, Heifetz. Well, well, well. What are you doing here? I am making another concert tour. Mary, throw him a herring. <laughs> Thank you. Mary, here comes Mrs. Van Twitter. You better wait on her. How'd you do? Hello, Tutch. What do you want? <laughs> I want a dozen tomatoes. We have no tomatoes, but we have some lovely potatoes. How about some bananas? <laughs> Never mind. I'll have a pound of nice, fresh peas. Yes, ma'am. Will you take them with you? Uh, no. Just roll them over to 315 Park Avenue. <laughs> roll them over, Mary. Roll over yourself, Jack. Oh. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Como se va questa sera? Se va bene. That's a good. <laughs> well, well, well there, Squire Pasquale. I want to... <laughs> I want to get some spaghetti. Yes, sir. How much spaghetti you want? No, oh, I think about uh, two miles. <laughs> two miles of spaghetti? Yes. How much is it going to cost? Well, it's 15 cents for the first quarter of a mile, five cents for each additional quarter. <laughs> Anything else? Well, now let me see. Oh, yes. I want some opera coats. Opera coat? You'll have to go to a tailor. <laughs> no, no, opera coat. Disappointed peaches. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. You mean... You mean apricots. That's what I told you, opera coat. <laughs> you, you don't speak a good English, eh, boss? <laughs> hey, who don't speak English? Who do I speak? What else do you want? I want some chocolate eclipse. Chocolate eclipse, you mean a chocolate eclair? Like a wise. All right, uh, what else do you want? You got uh, some Italian roses? Italian roses, uh, sure. Mary, push up uh, some garlic. Some a joke, eh, boys? Coming right up. So uh, sure, sir. <laughs> want to take him along? Uh... No, send him to my house. All right, Mr. Pasquale, what's your first name? Angelo. Angelo? Angelo's a new extra rich flavor taste, twice as good as ever before. Play, Don, what's the matter with you? A start of the music there. Oh! That was Don Best Friend, his orchestra playing 10 yards to golf. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you Mr. Curtis Mitchell, editor of Radio Stars magazine, who has a few words to say. Mr. Mitchell. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here tonight in behalf of the readers of Radio Stars magazine to thank Jack Benny for a decision he made two years ago. At that time, if you remember, although comedy was comparatively new to the air, many of the stage's funny men had already been lured to the microphones. Jack Benny in those days was reluctant to go on the air. If he failed to please, he stood to lose much of that prestige he had built for himself by years of painstaking performances before visible audiences. It was one of those perplexing crossroads to which many of us come. Jack Benny took the one marked radio, and that is the decision for which I want to thank him tonight. Once each month, Radio Stars Magazine is privileged to call public attention to outstanding radio programs and performers. We do it by means of a medal called the Radio Stars Award for Distinguished Service. This medal has never before been awarded to a comedian, but the listeners of America who are the readers of my magazine and, in the last analysis, my bosses, have directed that this month we draw attention to the finest show of its sort on the air. So, to you, Mr. Benny, and to your able fellow fun makers, Mary Livingston, Frank Parker, Don Bester and Don Wilson, and Harry Kahn, your writer, we say thanks, and we present you now with Radio Stars Magazine's award for distinguished service to radio. Good luck and good fun always. I want to tell you how much we all appreciate this honor, Mr. Mitchell, and I want to thank you personally on behalf of Mary Livingston, Frank Parker, Don Bester, Don Wilson, and Harry W. Kahn, my author, who have lent their splendid cooperation to all our programs. Thank you again, Mr. Mitchell. <laughs>
while ago, I told you about Jell-O's new extra-rich flavor. Now I'm going to tell you how to prove that finer flavor. Prove it three different ways. First, open a package of Jell-O and... Well, this finishes our second program for Jell-O, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night. Jack, you better give me that medal. You know how you lose everything. Oh, there goes the medal. <laughs> Come on, Mary. Let's go. I'll buy you a soda. I'm sorry, Jack. I've got a date. With whom? Good night, folks. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company. WJZ, New York.